Boss Fights Probably the best way to challenge your players in a game. Forcing them to take on a beefy opponent, requiring a clear understanding of these mechanics and mastery of your character, all while looking for tails and watching out for attacks, and striking at the perfect moment. Like all things, bosses, if treated with enough care and understanding of the game you're inside of, can be the most challenging, engaging, and memorable parts of a game. So it's a big shame I have the unfortunate fate of being a Roblox player. Yeah, no way! Roblox boss fights usually come in two categories. They are trash heaps that repeat the same attack trends as every other boss of their type in a lazy, uninspired, and mind rotting fight that is bogged down to appeal to literal infants, and the actually interesting fights with some talents. That gets sealed away forever after a month because they are event bosses, meaning for some reason the devs think they need to throw everything but the prizes in the trash instead of keeping the content people would like to be accessed anytime for more enjoyment. The unfortunate truth is that Roblox developers really only make games for money, so making a challenging and more importantly good boss is not really on their minds. So with all that in mind, welcome to Cheeseburger Crusade, a boss fighting game where you sell on a quest to find and recapture a missing burger. Oh, and I guess defeat evil or something. Developed by one corrupt media, this game has quite a bit to offer, with more content on the way. So let's talk the talk. You'll spawn in a relatively small map, and we'll soon see exactly where you're supposed to go. After a bit of walking, you can reach the first boss, the Brutal Delinquent. Trust me when I say it's as stock of a boss as it gets. Take a swig if you've heard this one before. The Brutal Delinquent is a merc who's redirected his attention to you to protect his turf. He's got spikes, a shockwave, a charge attack, basic minions, and a few melee moves to keep you on your toes. He heals after getting beat half to death, and after around 1100 HP, enters a second phase with buffed attacks at a faster pace. Literally as stock as it gets. I personally wasn't a big fan of this one, as you can probably tell. It serves as a nice enough introduction to the mechanics, but really, there's no reason to come back to it aside from using it as a test subject for other weapons. Overall, not bad but not exactly a great introduction. Thankfully, the next boss, the Emerald Ethereal, has way more going for it. Along with some basic attacks, it also has these boomerang orbs that bounce back and force you to keep you on your feet, which, may I add, is quite a neat concept. The only means of attack are clobbering the zombies and makes rise from the dead, and zapping the ghastly bastard into oblivion. Overall, not good, but still alright. It's what I would say if the developer didn't remember that second phase is our thing. The second phase saves these basic attacks, ramps them up, and begins rapid firing them until the arena becomes the finale of Robot 64. I must say, while nothing mind blowing, this does make for a fun fight, where you have to keep balancing the boomerang orbs crashing into you, while also dealing with the eyes constant firing and trying to kill the beefier enemies. However, I personally felt that the first phase is way too long. I mean, for something this effortless to avoid, you'd think this would be over within a minute. But no, you have to just sit there and wait for things to happen. In the second phase, it wasn't a problem because you were constantly prepping for the next attack. But here, you do basically nothing. I appreciated the first phase was more like a warm-up round with the eye introducing the player to his attacks before a single ball brings you to the real fight. However, as it stands, this boss is still cool. So yeah, a good fight, though give you some work. Bye bye Casper, have a nice non-existence. Alright, next on the chopping block is the Meat Titan, and I gotta say, it's actually quite well crafted. With the first two fights, well, mostly the first, you didn't really have to pay attention to what you were doing, which made them feel really boring. Here, you have to always keep an eye on this bastard or you're done. The fight consistently ramps up its own chaos that by the end of the fight, it just turns into super bomb survival. With its Meat Rushers, Meat Hunks, and Meat Husks, which do literally nothing, you're constantly being swarmed and have to balance running away with flying boulders to throw at the boss. There's just this feeling of urgency, which is what I want from a game like this. It's something hard to throw at the player to warm them up for even harder fights. Overall, it's a very engaging and fun fight. It actually feels fair and feels rewarding to go a while without getting hit. And that's all the main bosses for right now. Gotta say, even though there are parts of them I just really didn't like, there's quite a bit to enjoy here, and I can't wait to see what comes next. However, we're not quite done. You see, there's a secret boss which you get a key for after being all three bosses. Said boss is found for a miniature hunt inside the lobby. Or you can just wall hug until you win. That works too. 
said boss, the Nightmare, is a really good fight that calls back to the original so you can put small spins on them. I mean, busted melees, bullet hells, throwing insanely busted orbs, the shockwave and spike attacks that every damn boss has for some reason. It's a nice way to make these fights feel somewhat connected and like this is the final test of your skills before facing the next batch. Surprisingly, I don't have a lot to say. This is just a great way to cap off the first world, and it's something I'd like to come back to. So after clearing all four bosses, what next? Well, play a lot, actually. This game has quite a lot of extra content to explore. Raids of manors, surviving raids of ice golems, busting down mansion doors, a cover of everything inside, and others with their own content as well. Did I mention that all these have their own bosses which are comparable or even better than the first four? In the only event I've ever really beaten, the Christmas 2022 event, there were two bosses that stood out. Tricor and Azeroth. The former being a Templar dead set on reviving its species, with a ton of attacks such as Icicle Breath, tornadoes to throw you away, making the icicles rain down to bombard you with explosions, and even a stage hazard in the form of a shockwave which you need to manage along with the previously mentioned attacks and quite a few more. The latter is a god of ice that hits heavy and hits hard, with orbs to slingshot at you with tricky mechanics, dashes, and explosive defensive maneuver, and once again a lot more. They're really quite impressive. A lot of stuff to unpack here, all of which coming even before the second world after many years. So, you may be wondering, how do you access these worlds? Good question, you see, you can't! Yeah, they're all event areas that go away to be sealed away forever after the fact. So all these stages, prizes, and bosses are basically lost. All that sweet content are reachable by normal means. In my opinion, this is the game's fatal flaw. It's way too caught up in the events to get any real work done. I mean, the event weapons get out quite a lot to how you fight these bosses, and speaking of weapons, there's quite a lot of them. But the only one permanent aside from the bat is the pipe, which doesn't add much to the game. When you look at a boss like Tricor or Azeroth, and look back at something like Emerald Ethereal, it really feels like the developer is shooting himself in the foot, doesn't it? I mean, Corrupt is making these very engaging and difficult fights that have a ton of attacks and varying ways to approach them, with great prizes and overall great experiences. So we're just left with Casper over here throwing the same three moves at you over and over again with little else to really do. At the time of writing, I suppose that April Fool's event is in the works, with World 2 supposedly being on the way. However, if I'm being honest, I'd rather get a basic palette level with a few secrets if that means we can get to have any real progress made on the main game. And also, why can't we just access the events without the prizes obtained just so we can play them again? I mean, every three months there's another boss or stage ad that gets thrown aside. Is it really that difficult to just add up all to them? If there's anything to take away from this, it's that more work needs to be done on the main game, not just whatever holiday comes along to hold the entire operation off. Listen, I really do like this game. I feel like it's a hit that's just waiting to blow up. However, if the game can't reliably update and add more content, then this project is probably going to go nowhere. Still, this game is one more checking out, and I advise you give it a go. With all that said and done, that's all I have to say. Like and subscribe and do all that algorithm stuff, and yeah, I'll see you next time. Hopefully with a switch up in content. Goodbye, my dear viewer.